every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. Our next segment, kind of following that betting theme, we're going to be looking at some popular prop bets for tonight's game. Now, like I said before the break, these have been heavily impacted by the loss of A.J. Brown for the Philadelphia Eagles. But that just means the betting kind of market gets a little bit more interesting. So let's talk about a couple of nice bets coming up for tonight's game. The first one, kind of my mistake, A.J. Brown to score a touchdown. I felt very confident in this before I heard the news of the injury. So disregard this. But had he played, uh, you know, based on the form I saw from him last week, I wanted to put a pass him at plus 110. Unfortunate. Hope he has a speedy recovery because we've seen a lot of injuries, especially to the wide receiver position this past weekend. So... Hope they all have speed recoveries, but it is what it is, and that just means more opportunities for different members of the Philadelphia Eagles offense to step up. Uh, Anthony Manzano says, question before you talk about prop bets with these constant short week injuries with players. Do you think eventually the NFL might think of taking away Thursday night games no matter how much money? That's an interesting question, Anthony. I appreciate that one because it definitely gives perspective and light to the amount of injuries that have been sustained. And especially now that it definitely feels like, even though it's not like soccer where you're playing on the time, that there is a congested sense to the schedule, right? Where now it's a 17-game slate. It's definitely affecting these players, and it's taking a toll on them. So, to your point, I think that I feel like Thursday night games as well kind of lose their luster as well. So I wouldn't be mad if the NFL took them away. And also, they're kind of bad matchups, to be honest, as well. They're not appealing that much. So it's definitely kind of this quid pro quo between the NFL and all these ownerships to kind of come to a conclusion where they want better safety for these players. And so I'm thinking of this from... A fan perspective. Do I, A, want to watch a a midweek game where, you know, it might not be as appealing, and B, one of my favorite players in the league could get injured? Or do I want to continue seeing it and have it be the most unappealing of the primetime games? I feel like a lot of people have grown disaffected with, with it as well. That's a very interesting question as well. So, Thank you for this update, and we hope that all those players who are injured have speedy recoveries because we don't wish the worst for them because we want them to succeed as much as anything. But A.J. Brown, unfortunately, did do this a little bit of graphic here before uh, hearing the news, so that's why, but it is kind of unfortunate, and it does shed light on the injury crisis in the NFL right now. But... Speaking of a guy coming back from injury and kind of not, you know, stepping up to the plate, I don't necessarily fault him for it, but we're going to have to see. This is a big litmus test for him. Kirk Cousins, though, will have under 226.5 pass yards. Minus 114. Here's the thing. I think that Kirk can succeed in an offense where he can get the ball out quickly. But... It's going to be a very slow process for him. As Andre says, come on, Kirk. I mean, I I, I appreciate the hype surrounding Kirk. I love that Kirk kind of resembles a sense of hope and optimism for this Falcons fan base. But right now, just based off what I saw last week, this could be... Something that we come back to when you guys can say, I told you so, if Kirk Cousins performs. I just don't see, from what we saw last week, him being ambitious enough for this offense. And now, going back to the point that Shots with the Belt brought up about Penix, you now have this weird contingency plan where you kind of feel like, and you're expecting almost, 
that Kirk Cousins could be set up to fail. Because that Michael Penix pick definitely was very skeptical when it happened. But let's say Kirk Cousins it starts off 0-4. What's going to be made of Atlanta right now? And I think that we are over-exaggerating the Bucks and say I think the Bucks will stick around. The Saints are going to have to see. That was a very impressive performance from them. But right now, I think that the NFC South is still an attainable goal for the Atlanta Falcons. It just is a matter of breaking that barrier between the Kirk Cousins of the Achilles injury and the Kirk Cousins of the Atlanta Falcons. And so, right now, as much as I want to appreciate Kirk Cousins as a quarterback, tonight's game is going to uh, underline some of his inefficiencies. And it's not going to be a pretty game for him. So, under 226.5 passing yards will be my pick for him. Because I don't want to start this segment off on a sad note. I don't like talking about guys in ways that not don't necessarily undermine them, but aren't, you know, about the bigger picture concerning their play. But Kirk Cousins just doesn't feel ready to assume the mantle of Falcons QB right now. And with the pressure and the different style of offense that Zach Robinson, the new OC, wants to employ, it doesn't feel like it's going to work for very long. But let's get to more hopeful prop bets for this week because with the absence of A.J. Brown, more opportunities will be availed to the many weapons that Philadelphia has at its disposal. Starting off with Saquon Barkley, probably the most impressive player from week one. I'm just going to put it out there. Saquon really stepped up to the plate as someone who just makes this Philly offense more versatile. It looked like he took a lot of pressure off Jalen Hurts' shoulders. Hopefully this continues week by week because he is going to be a big X factor. I feel like it's kind of going to come down to how they use him in certain situations. But what we saw in Brazil from him really was fascinating to watch. It was vintage Saquon. And what he's going to do for this team tonight should be nothing short of impressive again. I think he's going to have over 77.5 rush yards at minus 114. And I think that a lot of people would feel comfortable betting on Saquon right now. And the running back market is getting thinner and thinner. We have so many injuries at that position as well. Saquon just feels like the answer right now. I'm knocking on wood because he also has a lengthy injury history. But right now, Saquon just feels like he's reinvigorating this team, the running back market, and really setting a stamp as someone to be reckoned with in the NFC. And games like this in prime time will be indicative of what Saquon can do. So... This bet just seems like chalk at this point. I'm really high on Saquon after what I saw in this offense. And so I do feel like he is going to be one of, if not the best players in this game. But that being said, I will say he's going to have under 15.5 receiving yards. I think that Jalen, you know, lost a big piece. So... It seems weird to say that Saquon will be under, but I feel like Jalen Hurts is not going to worry as much about you know the loss of uh, A.J. Brown. I think he's going to be very comfortable in trying to get more pieces incorporated into the offense, show the depth. And Saquon could be an interesting uh, contingency plan in terms of the receiving game and an interesting security blanket as well. But I just have a lot of confidence in what the Eagles can do offensively. They don't necessarily have to rely on Saquon in the receiving game if they want. So it's going to come down to, you know, what the Falcons' defense can do. If the Falcons' defense can keep them in the game, then maybe I'll be very wrong about Saquon in that prediction, in that regard. But I feel like Saquon just adds a lot of value on the ground for this game. And I think that in terms of the Eagles, should they see 
that the Falcons are really pressuring their pass catchers, then they can shift to more of a run-style game, really grind them down, and take over in that sense. Look out for Saquon tonight. And the final bet should be a popular one because Devontae Smith is now the man for tonight's game. Over 62.5 receiving yards. Couldn't even go over 100. I'm not putting it past him. Now, I think that the best part of what Philly can do is that Devontae Smith can either play in the slot, which allows A.J. Brown to go vertical, or Devontae could just go vertical himself. And what was the most puzzling part of that as well was that sometimes Jalen Hurts didn't necessarily have the deep ball in him. So tonight could be a good way to kind of figure out different vertical route trees for both of these players, even though A.J. Brown isn't going to be involved. I want to see Devontae Smith be varied tonight, but I also want to see how they handle him going vertically, how many times he's going to go vertically. Because, like I said, the Falcons' secondary is definitely underrated. It's going to be something of interest to watch in this game because I think that they will be able to keep the Falcons in this one because of the fact that I think that their defensive game plan will be to pressure these pass catchers from Philly. But Devontae Smith could be someone to have a breakout day. Now, should Jalen Hurts kind of give the ball over to Saquon a little bit more? I could see a world in which Devontae Smith does not have a big day, but he's always going to be someone to split defensive minds. Kind of, you have to account for him wherever he aligns on the field. So look for Devontae Smith to impact the game in more ways than one. He can be someone who would be a decoy. He can help, you know, vertically if they choose to do that. Or most importantly, he's just there as a matchup problem because he's starting to become more and more like a wide receiver when he's up to A.J. Brown's level, I believe, in this offense. So... It's going to come down to whether or not he can step up in his absence in terms of how much of this offense will go through him in the future. But let me know what you think in the comments because that will just about do it for this segment. Coming up next, we transition from the fantasy stars of college football from earlier to the fantasy college uh, fantasy stars of the NFL. A lot of storylines from this weekend to talk about. We'll be right back after this quick break.